Human rights activist Omoele Shawore has listed 15 critical demands from Nigerians as part of the upcoming Days of Rage protest. The protest tagged End Bad Governance in Nigeria aims to address the country's governance challenges. According to Shawore, a former presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, the demands were compiled from inputs received from Nigerians participating in the End Bad Governance protest. The demands are directed at President Bola Tinibu's administration and are considered non-negotiable by the protesters. The days of rage protests scheduled for August 24, 2024 have been preceded by the demands published by Shore on his S account. The 15 demands from Nigerians include a call for President Tinibu administration to 1. Scrap the 1999 constitution and replace it with a people-made constitution for the Federal Republic of Nigeria through a sovereign national conference immediately followed by a national referendum. 2. Thus, the Senate arm of the Nigerian legislative system keep the House of Representatives and make lawmaking a part-time endeavor. 3. Pay Nigerian workers a minimum wage of nothing less than 250,000 naira monthly. 4. Invest heavily in education and give Nigerian students grants and not loans. Aggressively pursue free and compulsory education for children across Nigeria. 5. Release Mazin Nandekanu unconditionally and demilitarize the Southeast. All NSAs and political detainees must be released and also compensated. 6. Renationalize publicly owned enterprises sold to government officials and cronies. 7. Which we'll be discussing this morning. Reinstate a corruption free subsidy regime to reduce hunger, starvation, and multi dimensional poverty. Nze, what is your take on this demand, the seventh demand? Reinstate a corruption free subsidy regime to reduce hunger. Are we going to deal with the number seven or to deal it from one to seven? We've dealt with all of that. Okay, we are now well, at, number at number seven. seven. Yes, we Good. deal with one every day. Good. That number seven, mm -hmm. you recall that I made statement on this last week. Mm -hmm. You, when you were talking about, you were the one that analyzed paying Nigerian workers a minimum wage of less than two hundred and fifty. Yes, that was when you brought in the yes. subsidy. All so right. to me, it is a simple thing. When Jonathan mm -hmm. came up to say no, we want to remove some, not all, remove some subsidy and uh, you know, generate more money to the government, mm. Tinubu said no, and called Nigerian youth to occupy Nigeria. And in case, if he's, if he's not aware, thank God technology has helped us that everything he said then were all intact. And you see it playing over and over now in social media. So all his statements were captured. Now, he came up without thinking whatsoever he had in mind, he said subsidy is gone. Even when the Buhari administration had kept subsidy to an extent, to some months, he had, from that month of uh, June, mm -hmm. he removed subsidy and Nigerians began to suffer. Now, whose money is being used to pay subsidy? Nigeria. Whose fuel are they subsidizing? Nigeria. Who drills the oil? Nigeria. Who should refine the oil? I don't know. Because presently, the oil that is being drilled in Nigeria is not being refined in Nigeria. So there is a high level of corruption somewhere, which Tinubu himself know, and his cronies. They refuse our own um, refineries here in Nigeria to work. They will drill the oil here, move it away to another person's country, refine it in that place, collect the ones they want to bring back to us, and sell to us, and claim that they are paying subsidy for it. Look at it. It is simple. To me, I demand that Nigerian government under President Bola Ahmed Tinobu should return subsidy to its fullest. Starting with. Secondly, make all the refineries in Nigeria to work. 
all the refineries, Potako Refinery, Wari Refinery, Kaduna Refinery, and Dangote Refinery. And also give license to other wedding Nigerians who want to establish a refinery. But and surprise them with crude. People would say, uh, going by the reality on ground, this could happen in an idealist an, an idealistic um, society or government. But let's look at the reality, shall we? Now, for years now, people have been crying about the moribund refinery. If you recall, when the government was even talking about removal of self -sub fuel subsidy, one of the promises that was made was to revamp revive, all this, uh, revive this this refineries. refinery. Good. So far, that has not been done. And then one man invest heavily in building a refinery with trusting that the oil is in his backyard. Yeah. And now, one of the reasons why the cost of oil is so high is because Nigeria imports oil at dollar rates. Okay. And then when we even look critically into the importing oil at dollar rates, the question will be, uh, is the subsidy actually removed in truth? Okay. Because if it's removed in truth and dollar is over 1,500, okay. how come we are buying oil for 850? But then that, that's conversation <laughs> for another day. Now let's look at, you know, what could be the problem? If Dangote has a, fine, a refinery that is up and running, you recall that Gote had imported crude to refine, yeah. right? From another continent. And from another continent. And now he's saying, I need crude. I need Nigeria to sell crude to me so that I can, ref re I can, I can refine and sell at a cheaper rate. Isn't that a move to help the government, as it were, to even cushion the effect of the fuel subsidy? And he's meeting lockjam. And the government is not helping until she started screaming out. Yeah. And the revelations were now being made. Okay. About a, a, a field in Malta. Okay. About smuggling of the crude. Okay. About cabals and powers <laughs> that be. Now, when you look at all, all this expose being done by Dangote, one would wonder. The fact that our refineries are moribund, is it not a deliberate move? by the powers that be to ensure that these refineries do not work. Because it appears that a certain set of people are getting fat at the detriment of the collective Nigerians. So let, let's, can, can you look at it from that perspective and analyze what exactly is there going are th on there in are this things, country? There are things we wouldn't want to say in public, mm -hmm. which to an extent have really been made public, but when you begin to talk about it, you may need to begin to, you may need to unveil more, more, things. more things you wouldn't like to delve into. But look at it. When I said that they should re return subsidy completely and make us buy a liter of oil for 50 naira. The people who are feeding off the subsidy, do you I'm, think I'm coming they, there, I'm coming there. I don't care about them. All right. I'm coming there. But I'm saying, let subsidy be returned in full mm. and let Nigerians buy fuel for 50 naira per liter. Look, one liter of fuel is a cup of water. And uh, this, this fuel we are talking about is something you fetch from your backyard. Come to the front house where the refinery is, pour it in there, refine it, and sell it to people who are around. But look at it. You just talked about the cabars that are feeding fat from this. My question is, what will they do with all this wealth they are amassing? Is it not just to keep themselves on top and their children? You see that most of the children they are breeding are becoming idiots and non-entities and riffraffs. Because I believe that hard time produces strong men. Produ strong men produce better society, better time. And better time produce idiots, weak men. And these people that are feeding fat, they have not asked their children, can you be able to manage my wealth after I am gone? Now, they don't care. They just rejoice when they see us cry. Look at the revelation about what is happening in Malta. Look at how the uh, Oando is coming to buy up Ajip. Look at how they are now owning most of the oil wells and oil blocks and flow stations. Now, they, these cabals, we collect this our fuel. 
take it away to their own refinery that ref they refuse to build in Nigeria. And refine it there and tell us that they are bringing it back. Now, Malta is a small country. That's important. They will now bring it back to us. And they are telling the marketers, we are saying that fuel is about 1,300 naira at landing, co as landing cost. So, who is now subsidizing it for us to buy at 850? You see that they are just playing with us. They are, telling, they are talking to Nigerians as if Nigerians don't have a head. And I begin to wonder, where are our technocrats? Where are our, if I may call them, wise men of Nigeria? Where are they? Let them come out to talk. So you see that the corruption and rot that is in NNPC, which I kept pointing at Mele Kerry. Mele Kerry has not done us good. And I don't know the, the synergy he has. I don't know the romance he has. I don't know the fraternity he has with the Tinubu government that made Tinubu government to, to still leave him there. Because and he's, the maybe he's, be, he's playing along. The question will be in, in, in the face of this anger, this protest, this pressure from Nigerian masses, some of these persons should have been asked by the government to step down. The yes! Should have fired some yes! The, the president, one would want... Why can't the president, on a national broadcast, address Nigerians? What would he say to Nigerians? Why can't, in the first, why can't he address Nigerians? Why can't he speak to the agitations and the concerns of Nigerians. When you look at the president's silence, and then you look at the statement by the Senate president, who is very close to the president, coming out to say, you'll be protesting while we are eating. One would wonder at the true body language of the federal government. Why can't the president address the country? The question is, what will the president say to Nigerians that he has not said before? Secondly, what was his intention? Even for if he's repeating, even if he's repeating himself. No, I'm coming. What was his intention for coming to power? You know that this protest, he never envisaged it. Hmm. The time they expected protest was when they robbed Peter B of his mandate, and Peter B was the man that said, "No, no, no, don't protest, don't protest." I know I I, I worked very tirelessly with the governorship candidate of Labour Party here in River State to make sure that we stop protests, because people actually wanted to, to uh, take to the streets. I stopped it strongly. The uh, governorship candidate, Beatrice Itubo, she, in fact, that woman is a man in disguise. She fought gallantly. She met with people, go, attending meetings from place to place. I was attending meetings, in fact, from Uniport. I had to move into the place and say, no, you don't do it. Please take the word of our principal, Pitobi. If you said you work for Labour Party, please take his words. And we stop the protest. So they feel that Nigerians are in, 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 in capable, capable of protesting. And now the thing is coming. So you see that they also spent billions to see that this protest did not work. Even to the extent of going to places to hire women and bring them to the street and give them placard and say, uh, campaign against, um, protest against protest. And at the end, to tell you, show you how unscrupulous these men are. They brought these women back and refused to pay them their greed money. That the women now began to, <laughs> you know, seek for their money. The Say, pay, pay us. We, we protested on credit against the protest. How do you protest on credit? Yes, they did. They protested on credit. Now they are demanding their pay. And look at yesterday or, or the day before yesterday. You, you see the one that is trending. The, the, young, the man. young man that was paid to come and protest against her. And when he was... When, when, question, for the when you people, through you people, when I say you people, <laughs> the media, threw a, a question to him, he fell off balance. And you saw how other people who say, who asked you to talk? Why should you talk? He has one show for us. And then, by God's grace, it has been captured on camera and uh, the thing went viral. Mm. So you now begin to see that the president who is silent has worked everything possible to silence the protest. And the, all the people that are now talking are the likes of uh, Betoku, the likes of Nwike, and all that. They are the ones now that are talking to Nigeria and still threatening fire and brimstone. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Inze, for thank coming. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. The, well, this, these people, Nigerians will not rest. And let me say this before we conclude Finally, that. Finally, in a minute. <laughs> Finally. In less than a minute. Actually. Yes. All right. If the government refused to listen to the people, mm. this protest will just be an appetizer to what will happen next. All right.